Hi, my name is Jeannie Choi and you're watching Sojo Tube. Joining me is Dr. Vincent Harding, Chairperson of the Veterans of Hope Project. Dr. Harding, thank you so much for joining me. I am very glad to be with you, my dear. Dr. Harding, I want to know about your life and how your life has pointed you to the work of social justice that you do today. My dear Jeannie, you want to know about my life at age <laughs> 77 and three quarters <laughs> within the period of this interview. I would say probably three or four kinds of benchmarks uh, for me. One was the fact that I grew up in a community, home, wonderful single parent, mama, church, small black Seventh-day Adventist church in Harlem, schools, New York City public schools, where people love me. Mm. And had great expectations for me and encourage me to realize my own best possibilities. That beginning, in many ways, had to lead to wanting everybody to have the opportunity to find such resources, to be encouraged by communities of love and caring, and to know that they had great capacities. And for me, it's only in a truly compassionate, democratic society that those kinds of things can be most fully brought forward. So I think that mm. the gifts that I was given led directly to my wanting others to have the opportunity to know and share and benefit from such gifts. The second thing is that when I went south with my wife to participate in the movement, We found, again, such magnificent human beings mm. and finding them, working with them, knowing them at deep, deep levels was a source of inspiration. Mm. Here were people, many of whom were risking their lives to work not just for civil rights, but to work for the expansion of democracy in America for all of America's people. To meet such people, to live and work with them naturally just kept feeding my life. And the process has been a continuing uh, one. Any one particular person who stands out in your memory? I will be difficult on this line because I want to be sure that it's not your usual hero. Mm. But for me, one of the most powerful persons who exemplifies this commitment would be Fannie Lou Hamer, the great organizer, song leader, democracy worker from Mississippi, who was the 20th child in the sharecropper's family, and who had a fourth grade education, and who had a spirit of courage and wisdom that was simply unmatched. 
and she was a loving, loving person. That was one of the major elements of what we saw in the movement. My wife and I were always commenting on how much love these folks had. Not just love because the books on nonviolence say you're supposed to have love, mm. but love because that was coming deeply out of their lives and out of their hearts. And so people like Fanny Lou, or as we all called her, Mrs. Hamer, uh, were, was, those were the kinds of people who spoke uh, deeply to me. On the other side, of course, was my friend Martin King, mm. who I gather up with what I speak of as the three big C's, courage, creativity, and compassion. And those made a deep mark on me. Share with me about the significance of President Obama's election to the presidency for you, particularly as someone coming out of the civil rights movement. Uh, what does that mean for you? Jenny, I forgot to <clears throat> make my usual little speech about my problems with the terminology of civil rights movement. And I think it's necessary in order to understand my appreciation of where, what had led to Obama. I feel very deeply that that terminology itself, even though it's convenient, even though it's used constantly, is absolutely inadequate mm. to describe the powerful movement of human transformation mm. that was going on, especially during that period of the 50s and 60s. What I saw was a movement for the expansion of democracy in America. I like to speak of it in that way, or a movement for the transformation of America. Because civil rights makes it too narrow, sure. makes it too legalistic. And as I see it, both on its more narrow level and on its larger level, that movement, without a doubt, prepared the way for President Obama to become President Obama. Its activities caught his attention. Its community organizing became the heart of what he saw as his own calling, vocation. And I think that as I see his election, two things are especially important to me. One was the campaign itself. The campaign was at least as important as the election. Mm. The gathering of all kinds of folks in that campaign, the use of so much of modern technology in the campaign, um, the working into the campaign of themes of hope and possibility, of grabbing in the campaign the heart of people and not just the minds or the politics, those were all very important things uh, for me. Because, Ginny, one of the things that I saw especially as I think most immediately back to the early days of this century. I was with a lot of young people, especially college young people, who kept wanting to almost romanticize the days of the 60s and the freedom movement. 
and they were in essence asking, when will our time come? What do we have that can in any way match the magnificence of that period? And I tried to encourage them not to try to copy it, not to try to clone it, but to know that if they would keep themselves ready, <laughs> they would be finding the opportunity uh, because it would come again. And I saw so many of them really get deeply engaged by the campaign. And as they got engaged, they became more fully practitioners in the development of a more perfect union. And for me, that's the ultimate goal, to build as many practitioners in the goal of creating a more perfect democratic society that we can get, not just voting folks, not even just political campaign folks, but people who from the deepest part of their hearts want to create a more just, more beautiful, more verdant, more democratic society. And the campaign gave people the opportunity for that. And Brother Obama offered a kind of point of light for people to focus on. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, we're going to have to love him in such a way that we challenge him and encourage him to follow his best instincts and not his worst, as we all need to do for each other. So all of that is part of what it meant for me, that it's another grand step on the way towards a more perfect union. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, thank you, Dr. Harding, for speaking with me. Thank you, Jeannie. Thank you.